Lucky Me, Episode 2. After possibly the most cringeworthy day on record, I was glad to slope off home. I'd barely been able to look anyone in the eye, least of all Mr Lockhart and Margot. Margot had had a face like thunder in my direction all day and I don't breathe too heavily in front of her. Mr Lockhart had wanted to see around the office and the studios next door and whilst he was wandering over to me, I kept my head firmly down and carried on with my work. Work was a general distraction from life's disasters and today was no exception. At one point, I'd had Leon jokingly waving a cup of coffee near me, threatening to spill it all over my desk. One more prank and I think he would have been wearing the cup, as I was a pro at that, apparently. I'd had an email from Lucy downstairs to say that she'd heard what had gone on. Jeez, good news always travels fast. I was glad to slip out of the main doors as discreetly as possible as soon as it turned five o'clock. Leon and Lucy had said that they were grabbing some dinner down at a local bistro, but there was no way I was joining them tonight. Yeah, I'll have an extra sauce with that ribbing and a side of further humiliation. Thanks. They were my best friends, but now I just wanted to enter my sanctuary for some peace and quiet. My little apartment was my haven, and it was always nice to have some alone time every now and then, especially after the day from hell. Grabbing my key from my bag, I entered the large building which was situated in a more idyllic part of the city. I was too exhausted to scope out any form of my surroundings. Neighbour swerving was generally a speciality of mine. Throwing my bag to one side and closing the front door behind me, I decided that a glass of wine and a hot bubble bath was definitely in order. In February temperatures, it was nice to be indoors. Letting my brunette hair break free from the confines of the hair tie, I slipped off my shoes and barefooted my way through to my little kitchen. Flicking on the kettle, I wanted a nice glass of wine to console myself with, a hot bath to drown in, and then a warm cup of tea to finish with. Heaven. Noticing that my answering machine light was flashing on and off, as I took my blouse off, I pressed the button to listen to the messages while I undressed. Hello, Miss Campbell. It's Stephanie here from Gravity Services. I'm phoning about your current broadband subscription. If you could call me back, that would be great. Thanks. Bye. Blah, blah, blah. More junk messages. Skipping through to the bathroom, I started running the water and added some of my best bubble bath to the steams of clear liquid. It filled the air with a beautiful scent as the beep of the answering machine signified the end of the message. Next, there was a voicemail from my landlord saying that the dodgy tap in the kitchen would be getting fixed next week, which I was glad to hear. I'd been waiting ages. Undressing my bottom half, I slipped on my cushy bathrobe as I wandered out of the bathroom, through the living room and to the kitchen to pour myself a glass of the good stuff and sort out a cup of tea for afterwards before sloping into the bathtub. Watching the amber colour of the tea bag circle through the water, trying not to scald my fingers, I took it out with a teaspoon and balanced it over to the bin. At the bump of the bin lid closing, the latest junk voicemail had stopped playing, and at the beep, I heard the distant sound of Lucy's voice ringing out. Grabbing my brew and wine, I practically tiptoed through to the living room, trying not to miss a word of her message. I'd not long seen her at the office, so what the heck was she phoning me about now? She was quickly saying that she needed to speak to me, and that it was urgent. Wondering what she wanted, I reluctantly abandoned my drinks on the coffee table and went and made my way over to the phone to call her back. Hi Ava, she answered in quick speed and sounding breathless. Hey, I've just got your message. What's up? Nothing much. Well, not nothing. When you left, Mr Lockhart announced that he's holding a party type ball this Friday. A ball? What the hell for? I gasped. Something about celebrating him taking over, and from what I can gather, it's like a chance for us to get to know him. He sent an email out to all of us. Why didn't I hear any of this? And what the heck do I wear? Lucy laughed. You shot out of work like your butt was on fire. No wonder you didn't hear him. It was last minute. He emerged from his glass box and quickly announced what he was planning. He would like everyone to be there. The glass box... What me and Lucy lovingly named the office that the boss sits in because it looks like a giant greenhouse with its glass walls. Well, it's not like I have any other plans, I suppose, I mumbled, thinking about it ruining my night of doing sweet FA. Yeah, but there's a twist. 
A twist, I answered, with my face skewing in confusion. Yeah, it's a masquerade ball, she chuckled. What? Eh? What? Why? Seriously, I fumbled. I knew you'd be pleased, she laughed at the other end. Pleased? Lucy, why the heck does it have to be something like that? From what I can gather, it's like a breaking the ice thing. It's taking us out of the equation. It's all very mysterious. She chuckled like a naughty schoolgirl. It's weird, and that also means... I know, she screeched. We'll have to go shopping. Shopping, my least favourite thing, and definitely Lucy's forte. Fine, we'll have to do it after work tomorrow evening. You'll have to help me. We've only got four days. Ah, oh, plenty of time. I know this great place that sells all weird and wonderful costumes. This will be a blast. Weird and wonderful sounded about right. I'm sure it will be. Thanks for letting me know, Luce. No problem. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Bright and early and not a coffee in sight, she jested. You know, you could really go off some people. Thank you for that, I half chuckled while shaking my head. See you tomorrow. Hanging up the call, I was lost in a thought of weird masks and with a scene in my head from something out of a bondage convention. It was weird, but perhaps he was more flamboyant with being American. Us Brits were a little more toned down and my happy place had something to do with pyjama bottoms and a tub of ice cream. Suddenly, my hearing came back into the room and I could vaguely make out the distant sound of lapping water. Crap, my bath! Darting into the bathroom, the bath was indeed starting to flow over the sides. As I looked like I was holding an impromptu phone party, I skidded over to the taps to turn them off. Looking like I was trying to perform the cha-cha slide, I grabbed my fluffy bath towel and mopped up the residue of my bath water from the floor. I'd saved that bath towel for afterwards, as it was the fluffiest one, and now it was lying limply on the floor, eyeing me as if wondering why I was trying to kill it through drowning. Reluctantly dipping my arm into the bath, which made it overflow even more, I pulled the plug out to let some of the water flow the correct way, away from me. This was really not my day. After mopping up the mess and finding another towel, one not as fluffy as the first one, I slid into the bath and was slightly miffed that it wasn't as bubbly, because most of the bubbles had flowed over the side. Resigning myself to the fact that I needed to pay more attention to what I was doing and to stop being such a klutz, I lay back and thought about the conversation with Lucy. Our old boss had never held any parties like that and we were lucky to get a free pizza on a Friday. But I knew if there was one person who'd be in his element about this scenario, it was Leon. I was surprised he hadn't called me instead. He probably already had a plethora of costumes neatly lined in his wardrobe, threatening to break into song at any moment. Understated was never a word he used to describe him. Emerging from the bath when I was prune crinkly, I decided to go and make myself something to eat and chill out for the night. Introverted by nature, the thought of what would be occurring on Friday was one that made me want to drown myself in a bucket of wine, but at least I'd have my two best friends there for support. They had both been there through everything, and when I'd first ventured down to London and found a job at Flirt, we'd immediately become firm friends. With having no family around, they were my lifeline, and the way we joked with each other and ripped each other to pieces in the nicest possible way, we were like brother and sisters. The flush of embarrassment reddened my cheeks when I thought about what else had happened throughout the day. Hosing the big boss down with coffee was not my finest moment. Welcome to the UK, Mr Lockhart. What must he have thought of me? The shame. It was definitely time to drink wine and then sleep. I needed to sleep to shake off the feeling of never wanting to return to work ever again. Up bright and early the next morning, it was time to venture back into the working world. It seemed like the night time only lasted all of five minutes, yet the day seemed to drag along like it couldn't get enough cringeworthy moments out of me. Morning, Ava, Lucy called out from the reception desk. Hope you've had your coffee this morning, she chuckled. Good morning, Lucy. Catch any more flies today? I replied, remarking upon an incident involving an open mouth and a blue bottle that had occurred over the summer. Touché, well played, she laughed, continuing to type away. 
Are you and Leon okay for lunch today? I called out as I skipped through reception which seemed like a mile long walk. Yeah, but we may have to eat in. Mr Lockhart wants to hold a group meeting in the office. He's really making himself at home. Meeting? Charisse never used to do that, I replied with my heels skidding to an abrupt halt on the marble floor. Yeah, but as we already know, he's not like Charisse, she grinned, typing away on her laptop. True, I mumbled. See you later. Bye, she called back to me as I turned to make my way to the elevator. As the floors pinged away in the elevator, the thud of dread hit the pit in my belly. Yesterday was beyond embarrassing, and I prayed nothing else would go arse up. As the doors opened, I had no time to think on it, and a few heads did turn my way, for all the wrong reasons. The wry smiles and few whispers told me that people were still aware of my coffee mishap, and probably wouldn't be letting me forget about it any time soon. Morning, hot stuff, Leon grinned, propping himself at his desk next to mine. Ugh, can we drop it? I groaned, flopping myself into my chair. Didn't you already do that? He laughed and then clocked the unimpressed look on my face. Okay, okay, I'll leave it be. Hey, he whispered, leaning over. Have you heard about the ball on Friday? How very posh. Yeah, Lucy told me about it last night. I sighed, flicking my computer screen to life. Ha, the social butterfly strikes again, he laughed, turning his attention back to his work. I am social, yet trouble seems to follow me everywhere. Yesterday was exhibit A, I grinned. Ah, you'll be fine. Anyhow, look. Leon eyed in the direction of the glass box, over to where Mr Lockhart could be seen emerging from his office, with Margot following close behind. Can I have everyone's attention, he called out as the office came to a standstill. I gather you all know about Friday. If possible, I would like a big turnout. Now, I know it's different, but I reward my employees' work, and this ball will be the start of things to come. Lots to do today. You'll find all details in your inboxes. I'm looking forward to getting to know you all better. Thanks for your time. Flashing us all a big pearly smile, a general swoon could be noted from the majority of the ladies, myself included. Oh, if only I hadn't hosed him down with coffee yesterday. I'd be able to look at him without cringing. Lots to do, Leon mimicked in an American accent. Standing up, Leon grabbed a feather boa from a mannequin that was situated near his desk and flamboyantly draped it around his neck, sauntering over to stand in front of me. Darling, you must get on with your work, otherwise I will spank you over my desk in true American style. I certainly want to get to know you better. Sashay away, Leon pouted, extravagantly flipping his head back. Before I could even prompt him to stop talking, Mr Lockhart had appeared behind him. Although mildly relieved that it wasn't me making a prat out of myself, for a change, I couldn't help but cringe for Leon. Opening his eyes, Leon was suddenly aware of Mr Lockhart's presence, and he stood bolt upright, hastily removing the boa from around his neck. Our boss stood there, dressed sharply in a suit, looking mildly amused, of the last thing to be etched on Leon's mug. Oh, Mr Lockhart, um, I was just... Leon rambled. I could see what you were doing, he grinned. It's always interesting to have a perspective on how you are perceived by others. Oh no, I mean, you don't do that. I was just... Leon blushed, as I sat there in awe of the spectacle. I came over to ask Ava for a moment of her time but she may be scared to come into my office with me in case I put her over my desk, he replied. I was so pleased I wasn't drinking anything, otherwise I think I would have sprayed the liquid contents all over my workstation. Leon scuttled towards his desk as I sat there wide-eyed, not knowing what to say. Can I have a word? Mr Lockhart asked, giving me a devilish grin. Er, uh, yeah, of course, I mumbled, side-glancing and embarrassed Leon, and following the boss through to his office. Take a seat, Mr Lockhart prompted, gesturing his hand toward the leather chair on the other side of his desk. Feeling the burn of eyes from my colleagues, I did as I was told and sat down. Taking a seat at his own chair, he composed himself before beginning. I watched on as he moved so elegantly, and unbuttoned his jacket to sit more comfortably. Anything being unbuttoned on him was extremely hot and the thought was distracting. 
Ava, I just wanted to have a little chat with you about yesterday, he began, breaking through my zone of leaping over the desk at him. Oh, yeah, I'm really so sorry about that, I stammered, with the flush of blood to my cheeks. I know you are, and I just wanted to make sure that you've not been getting too much, how do I put this, attention about it. He grinned, leaning back in his chair. No, no, well, not a lot of it. Everyone will laugh about it, but it's blown over. How's your crotch? I blurted before biting my lip. I mean, your pants, um, nether regions. Oh my word, I'm going to shut up. I cringe, bow my head. Everything down there is fine and we'll survive the second degree burns, he laughed. Good, I'm glad everything is okay. Uh, I mean, that's okay. Uh, you're okay. I needed to learn how to keep a lid on it. I was so much better at writing than talking. You can go now, he chuckled, which made my predicament even worse. Standing up, I made a hasty retreat for the door, making sure that I grabbed the handle and didn't shoulder it. Once outside of the office and walking swiftly to my desk, I was glad to break free. I always managed to act like a complete idiot in front of him, and I wondered how he managed to addle my brain. How did it go? Leon asked, discreetly leaning over to me. Awful, I sighed. I decided to ask him whether his crotch was okay. Ha, that's my girl. Straight to the point, Leon laughed. You need to be quiet, I chuckled, trying to desperately focus on my work. At least with you saying that, it detracts from me blatantly making fun of him. He snorted, turning back to his desk. True, at least something deflects from you. The heat never seems to come off me. I turn into a clumsy mess around him and it's getting beyond the joke. Maybe it's a good thing, he distractedly commented, typing away. How so? I eyed. Because you've been hung up on James for ages. This could be the perfect way to get over a man who's full of himself. Leon, he's my boss. There'll be no getting under him to get over someone else, I chuckled. Ah, you know what I mean. A change of scenery. Hell, boss or no boss, if he was gay, I'd be straight in there. I'm sure you would, Leon, and then you'd find yourself fired, I quietly laughed. True, but it'd be worth it. A peach like him doesn't come along every day. I could find another job, but I couldn't find another one of him. Leon, you naughty boy, I chuckled. What can I say? I'm a red-blooded male, and they don't tell me you've never thought about it. I'll admit, the odd tie-ripping and desk-flinging thought has come over me. Testosterone present and correct, he laughed. Oh, that could be my next beauty feature. Makeup that doesn't wear off during sex. I won't be needing that any time soon. Anyway, are you coming shopping with me and Lucy tonight for a costume for Friday? Nah, I've already got one in mind. I knew it. Oh, anything nice? I wondered. Just a little something I've used on a few occasions. I can imagine, I grinned, turning back to my work. The rest of the day passed with relative ease and the workload had turned up a notch since Mr Lockhart's arrival. He wanted some things changed and with Margot piping orders at us as well, it was fairly hectic. There wasn't time for lunch again, so after downing a cereal bar that I kept stashed in my desk, I was starving by the time 5pm rolled around. Although I hadn't been up and about a lot today, the balls of my feet were aching and I could have done with going straight home for a long soak in the bath but shopping with Lucy was calling and I knew she wouldn't let me get away with it. Ready? Lucy happily smiled at me, stood next to my desk looking all excited, hardly my own expression. Yep, let me just grab my things. Where are we going? I asked, stuffing my belongings into my bag. I know a really good place that does fancy dress. We could shop there and then do you fancy grabbing a bite to eat? Yeah, that sounds good. I'm really hungry. Me too. I had a lousy sandwich from the vending machine downstairs. They always taste like soggy sponges, she chuckled. It's more than I had. I had an old cereal bar I found stuffed in my drawer. Yum, she sarcastically replied. See you later, Leon, I called out to him as I watched him mess around with a box of beauty products. Uh, yeah, I'll see you both tomorrow, he half-heartedly waved. I'd give him that. He was definitely dedicated to the world of all things beautiful. See you tomorrow, Lucy commented in his direction, before we both headed out of the building. Wrapping myself in my warm coat, the chill of the evening air clutched at my body. It was freezing cold and the streets were starting to ice up. There was always something beautifully magical about winter. 
The dark nights gave way to the lights twinkling away in the shops, and when the chaos of the Christmas shoppers was well and truly over, it was nice to be able to shop relatively peacefully in it. Having said that, London was always busy, and as we took the tube into the heart of the city centre at rush hour, it was difficult to find a seat. After being crammed between sweaty bodies, I was always relieved to depart the station, and I couldn't wait to get this shopping spree over and done with. Did you read the email about Friday? Lucy asked, as we rounded the corner to where the shop was hopefully situated. Yeah, I briefly scanned it over before. It's a seven o'clock, isn't it? Yes, but with a function being held at a hotel, rooms are available at a discount price. Do you fancy it? We can make a night of it. Um, I suppose so. The Alexandra is a really nice hotel. It will save having to get home in the cold. Yeah, it'll be great. We'll have so much fun. She did sound more enthusiastic than I felt about it, but I was looking forward to having a good night with my best buds. Finally, we reached the costume shop Lucy had been talking about, and it was nice to get inside in the warmth. The shop was due to shut in less than half an hour, so it was thankfully peaceful inside. Different costumes lined the rails, and it was a sight in itself. It wasn't a tacky place with silly costumes. It was a shop that seemed to be adorned with Victorian, Grecian and all manner of period pieces that were stunning to look at. Can I help you? The lady called out, making her way over to us. Hi, yeah, me and my friend have got a masquerade ball on Friday and we both need costumes, please, Lucy explained. Ah, right, not a problem. Follow me. Following the lady on behind, I was in awe of all the beautifully embroidered costumes that looked like they were one of a kind. They were stunning, and I hoped I wouldn't spill anything on whichever one I would be wearing. Here you go, ladies. There is a selection of dresses and masks that match, depending on what look you're after, the lady explained, moving her arm out to reveal glass cabinets full of gem-encrusted masks with dresses hung up to match. They looked fit for Victorian royalty, and looking at these costumes made me feel a little bit more enthused about Friday. Oh, Ava, look at this one, Lucy gasped, moving me toward the glass cabinet and pointing at a beautiful black mask, dotted with crystals around the eye holes, with feathers protruding elegantly from one side. That is gorgeous, I commented. With your dark hair, it would look beautiful, the lady interrupted. It is stunning. Do you rent or buy these? I wondered, eyeing the dresses. Either. People generally buy the masks because they're unique and rent the dresses. Oh, I like this one, Lucy smiled, looking at a beautiful baby pink one, which would perfectly match her blonde locks. That's really pretty. You should get it, I smiled. I will. I'll take it, she practically cheered. After looking at some dresses, I picked a black sequin dress with a cut down to the front to highlight some cleavage. Lucy chose a baby pink dress to match her mask, and between us, we definitely wouldn't look half bad. Making our choices and paying for them, I felt quite satisfied that I had a stunning outfit for Friday, and in minimal time. It was thanks to Lucy, otherwise I would have never known about this shop. Chatting about our purchases, we headed back nearer to where we both lived, and stopped off at a restaurant to grab a bite to eat. It was actually nice to be out and about with her for a while, as on some days, life did feel like all I did was constantly work. My social life had been somewhat on the wane, and even though I wasn't as social as my friends, it was time to rectify that a little bit. We stopped at our local bar that did some delicious food, and bundling ourselves into the restaurant, my hands were numb from the cold and from carrying my shopping bags. It was a mini spree that was worthwhile, but shopping in winter was never my favourite thing to do. Being seated at a table near to the window, it was nice to thaw out and watch the frosty world go by, as Lucy was chatting about her sister that she was planning on seeing soon. As we were served our hot chocolates and waited for the food, a figure near to the bar caught my eye. Not paying a blind bit of attention to what Lucy was jabbering on about, I squinted to try and see more clearly and realised it was James. Oh jeez, I mumbled. I hated being around him ever since that awkward moment at the Christmas party and the fact that he'd never even looked at me since. What's up? Lucy asked, scanning the direction which my eyeline was directed in. Ah, Lothario number one, she commented. Number one? Who's number two? I asked. Mr Lockhart, she smirked. Oh, would you and Leon knock it off? 
He's the boss. And nice to look at, but that's it. Anyway, crap, he's actually coming over, I whispered in a high pitch, wondering if I could hide behind my hot chocolate. Ladies, James smiled, wandering over and looking like butter wouldn't melt. James, how nice to see you outside of work, Lucy grinned, eyeing me in her peripheral vision. I'm surprised Margot lets you out on weeknights. Lucy, I gasped. What's that supposed to mean, he asked, stopping next to our table. Nothing, she means nothing, I cut in. Yes, we all knew James was Margot's favourite, but I'm not sure he did. Anyway, what do you want, James? Lucy sternly asked. Is that any way to say hello to someone? Wow, I see two work colleagues. I come over to say hello. You never say hello to us when you see us in work, Lucy snapped, while I looked on at her in sheer mortification. It wasn't like her to be rude, and I wondered what had gotten into her. Okay, I can see I've caught you at the wrong time of the month, he chuckled. What the? she gasped, emerging from her seat. Loose, come on, I soothed, pulling her back by the arm. I'll see you ladies around, he grinned, wandering away from us. What the heck was all that about? I wondered, as I watched her edge back into her seat, not tearing her narrowed eyes away from him. Nothing, she mumbled, sitting down and looking subdued. I wasn't used to seeing her this way. The usual blonde, bubbly, gossipy girl looked bothered by something, and I couldn't place what it was. Considering you and Leon always rib me about getting with him, I chuckled. Leon does. I think you could do much better, she snapped. Okay, that was that line of conversation over. Shortly afterwards, our food was brought over, and I was glad of the excuse to put something in my mouth. The conversation had ground to a halt, and usually couldn't be dried up by a heat wave. I noticed James chatting up a few girls at the bar, and that was probably no unusual sight, as he did have ladies flocking. I thought he was good looking, but he never struck me as the type that you'd take home to meet mum and dad. Not that I ever had that problem. When we finished our food, I paid the bill. Usually we split it, but I could see that my friend's mind was elsewhere, and it was a small gesture of thanks for showing me where the shop was today. I'd have to speak to Leon about what had gone on tonight. Maybe he would be in the loop a little bit more about what was up with Lucy. Saying goodbye to her when we left the station, I trudged home in the icy conditions that were now spreading to my feet. Getting into my apartment, it was a relief to take my heels off and feel the blood eventually be able to circulate to my toes. I'd have to invest in a warm pair of fluffy boots to wear for winter, as I was never the most capable woman in heels anyway. Sitting back with a cup of tea, my mind flitted toward Friday. I decided that it would be a good night, no matter what, because I'd have an absolute blast with my best friends. My outfit was sorted, my mind was set, and nothing could go wrong. Right? Right?